When a little girl mysteriously disappeared from her own bed, everyone thought she had been kidnapped. Her desperate parents used every available resource trying to find her. They put up posters and billboards and appeared on TV, begging the abductors to let their daughter go. Everyone in Mexico held their breath, praying that the girl would be found safe and sound. But then, the case took a horrific turn when the little girl's lifeless body was found in her bed, wedged between the mattress and the foot of the bed. Had she been there all along? What happened to her? This is the controversial case of Paulette Jabara Fara. Four-year-old Paulette Jabara Fara was born into a wealthy and influential family in Mexico City. Her dad, Mauricio Gabara, worked in real estate, while her mom, Lizette Farah, was a successful lawyer. She had an older sister named Lizette, who was seven years old, and the family lived in a posh apartment with all the luxuries they could need. Paulette was born premature and suffered from a disability that made it difficult for her to walk and talk. However, she was a fighter and made great progress in therapy, to the point that she could feed herself, climb stairs, and use the bathroom on her own. Because of her special needs, her parents hired two sisters, Erica and Martha Casimiro, who worked as nannies for Paulette and her sister. On the Sunday evening of March 21st, 2010, Paulette, her sister, and their dad, Mauricio, came home from a three-day vacation in Val de Bravo. The girl's mom, Lizette, had not gone with them because she had her own trip with some friends. She arrived around the same time the girls did and tucked them into bed like she usually did. Lizette said that when she left Paulette's room that evening, everything seemed fine, but later in the night, something would happen that would turn all their lives upside down. The next morning, one of the nannies, Erica, went to Paulette's room to wake her up for school. But to her surprise, she was not there. She, along with her sister Martha, searched the bedroom and scoured the entire house looking for the little girl. But there was no sign of her. Where could she be? There was no way she could have left the apartment on her own due to her disability. Plus, the doors were locked and windows intact. Could someone have taken her? Erica was now beginning to get worried for the little girl's whereabouts, and she went and told Lizette about her concern. The three of them went around the entire apartment building, knocking on the doors and searching for Paulette, but she was still nowhere to be found. The house was closed. We don't understand anything. The surveillance cameras in the building did not show her leaving the house or anyone taking her. So where was she? The news of Paulette's mysterious disappearance garnered national attention, with every media house in Mexico covering the unfolding events. The then Attorney General of the State of Mexico, Alberto Bazbaz, became involved in the case and poured every resource available into finding the little girl. Paulette's mom, Lizette, went on national television, pleading with her daughter's alleged kidnappers to return her. I, in particular, am very, very devoted to the Virgin of Fatima. She made a miracle for me that my daughter lived when she was born because she was premature. The only thing I ask of whoever has her is that they take care of her while she is not there with me to take care of. It was, however, noted that during that interview, Lizette did not cry or seem upset about her daughter going missing. Instead, she seemed a little nervous. Still, Lizette would go on to distribute flyers with Paulette's picture, put up billboards, and place TV advertisements for information about her daughter's whereabouts. Paulette's dad, Mauricio, appeared on TV for begging his daughter to be returned to him. He said that he had gone out to the gym the morning that Paulette disappeared. At one point, he did imply that he knew where his daughter was, but didn't go into details about it. Now, the strange circumstances surrounding Paulette's disappearance shocked everyone. How was it possible that a little girl would vanish from her own room without anyone knowing anything about it? The family had two dogs, Yet none of them had made any sound during the night. Experts from various state agencies, including search and rescue dogs, had gone through every corner of the house, turning Paulette's room upside down, but did not find her. It was like she vanished into thin air. Nothing about this case made sense, but things were about to get even weirder. After a week went by without any leads on Paulette's whereabouts, suspicion began to shift to the people closest to her, especially her parents and the nannies. 
Investigators had noted that the four had given inconsistent accounts about what happened that night, leading the police to believe that they were hiding something. Each one of them at a certain moment have falsified their statements, which has made it difficult to know the truth of the facts and clarify a firm line of investigation. It had been noted that Lizette and Mauricio had been behaving quite weird since their daughter disappeared. They showed little emotion and didn't seem concerned about Paulette's whereabouts. Now, you'd think a mom who is desperate to find her missing daughter would want to provide all the information she could if it would help bring her home, right? Well, apparently Lizette didn't think so. A secret recording was released where she can be heard telling her older daughter, Lizette Jr., not to say anything about Paulette's disappearance to the police so that they would not be blamed. In the recording, Lizette Jr. asks her mother, why mom? And Lizette replies, because otherwise they will blame us for stealing her or that you took her away to be stolen. When confronted with this recording, Lizette at first denied it, saying that it was edited. So it sounded like she was telling her daughter to hide some information. However, she later admitted that these were the words she used, saying, I had the conversation with my daughter, but not in the context they showed. Another thing that made Lizette appear even more suspicious was some weird comments she would make regarding her daughter. In one of her interviews, Lizette joked about her daughter's whereabouts, saying that maybe she had been abducted by aliens or Harry Potter. Harry Potter, okay. But her worst comment was this. Even if I lose Paulette, I still have another daughter. What a messed up thing for a mother to say. On March 30th, Lizette and Mauricio spent several hours at the police station being questioned. They were put under house arrest and transferred to a hotel where they would stay while the investigation was going on. But despite all this, no one would have been prepared for the horror that was about to unfold. On Wednesday, March 31st, at around 2 a.m., a team of three forensic investigators entered Paulette's room and began taking measurements of the bed while recording their activities on video. At one point, one of them declared twice that Paulette was severely beaten to death. Then, a few moments later, one of the investigators removed the blanket from the bed to reveal two large blood stains, one of which was the size of an adult's head. The same man then walks to the front of the bed and with the help of another forensic expert, removes all the sheets to reveal a grisly sight of Paulette's body, partially hidden on one side of the mattress. The lifeless body was wrapped in sheets and blankets and wedged between the mattress and the foot of the bed. Pictures released by the authorities showed the little girl lying on her side with red pajama bottoms and a blue sweater, the same ones that she had been wearing on the night she vanished. The Attorney General, Alberto Bazbaz, said at a press conference that authorities had not noticed anything amiss in the room until Tuesday evening when they detected a faint odor of decomposing flesh. At the time, it was not clear whether the spot Paulette's body was found was where she died or whether the body had been moved. Now, as you can already guess, this horrific discovery raised more questions than answers. Although the authorities had given the video to the media as proof of how the body was found, many people doubted its authenticity. Like, how did the investigators know that Paulette was severely before they found her body? How did they know the specific place to look and even have a camera to record it? It was also noted that none of the people in the video seemed surprised when the body was discovered. And they even continued narrating the events with a mechanical voice as if they were reading from a script. Also, the time that the video was recorded was pretty unusual because legal procedures are usually done during the daytime. None of what was happening made any sense and it would get even more confusing. The authorities said that the video was a reenactment of the scene and not a real time event, which somehow made sense and explained most of the concerns. Alberto Bazbaz declared Paulette's death as a homicide and her mother, Lizette, as the prime suspect saying, she is the only suspect. I have no doubt that this is a homicide investigation. At this moment, we can say Lizette is a suspect. In addition to her, we are investigating the level of knowledge of others involved. 
Although Lizette claimed that she was not involved in her daughter's death, she was indicted on April 3rd. A psychiatrist for the Attorney General's office said that Lizette suffered from some type of personality disorder, which made her incapable of feeling anything. She described her as a brilliant lawyer who was very intelligent, very capable, and very astute, but was also cold and without emotional attachment. However, in a shocking turn of events, the Attorney General would declare Paulette's death as an accident due to asphyxia which obstructed her respiratory airway and compressed her abdominal thorax. An autopsy revealed that Paulette slept with an orthopedic cloth over her mouth, which was placed every night to prevent her from sleeping with her mouth open. On the fateful night, the coroner believed that Paulette, by her own means, rolled over while sleeping and accidentally fell headfirst into the space at the foot of her bed, where she became entrapped and wound up suffocating to death. Since the autopsy found no traces of toxic substances in the body or signs of physical injuries, her death was established as accidental. The autopsy also revealed that the body had not been manipulated or moved after her death and had therefore been there the entire time she was missing. As for the reason why there was no smell of decomposition, the authorities explained that the blankets covering Paulette's body had concealed the smell for nine days. Now, the public was completely outraged by these findings, saying that the authorities were trying to cover up the murder of a little girl. It didn't make sense that Paulette's body had been under the mattress for this long without anyone ever noticing. More than 100 people, including police officers with sniffer dogs, had been in that room over the course of investigations. Lizette had even held a press conference while sitting on Paulette's bed, yet none of them noticed anything. Paulette's two nannies, Martha and Erica, also disputed these findings, saying that they had turned the room upside down and did not find Paulette's body. Martha said in her testimony, I looked in the bathroom, under the bed, and in the closet. I saw she was not there. I also went into the bedroom of the parents to look for her, to the bedroom of the other girl, Paulette's sister, Lizette. And from there, we started looking for her again. And I went back to look for her in the bedroom. Her sister, Erica, also said, in fact, if it had been like that, I think we would have noticed. Since thousands of people came to look for her, the bed was made. I never saw the mattress pulled back. I did not see a bundle or anything. It does not make any sense to me that the body could have been there since Monday. Now, what makes this even more disturbing is one of Lizette's closest friends, Amanda, had slept in Paulette's room which, by the way, had not been secured by the authorities from the day that the little girl went missing. And in the time that she was there, the bed was made on a daily basis, and nobody noticed the girl's body or bloody stains that were shown in the forensic video. All these suspicious details pointed at foul play being involved in the little girl's death, yet the death was ruled as an accident, and Lizette, Maruccio, and the nannies cleared as suspects, but things would not end there. Despite both Lizette and Maruccio being cleared as suspects, the mystery of what happened to their daughter caused a lot of strain in their marriage, to the point that they started to openly accuse each other of knowing something. Maruccio said in an interview that his daughter's death wasn't an accident and he could not completely trust his wife. The only thing I can say is that for me, this was not an accident and I leave it to the authorities. My soul and my heart is in their hands. I can only contribute to the outcome they will decide. In a separate interview, Lizette tearfully insisted she was innocent and had no idea why her husband was accusing her. They have played a lot with our minds. Maybe he didn't have enough trust in me because I have never doubted him. The conflict between the couple extended to other family members. Lizette's brother-in-law even offering her $500,000 and a plane ticket to leave the country. The Jabera family has taken Lizette's other daughter, Lizette Jr., and would not allow her mother to see her. Lizette would later be awarded custody after she filed a case against Maruccio. These squabbles got so bad to the point that Maruccio did not even attend his own daughter's funeral. Paulette was buried on April 6, 2010. But strangely, seven years later, her body was exhumed and cremated after the authorities said that it was no longer needed as evidence for the case. 
Now, while this case is over 10 years old, the truth of what really happened to Paulette has never been established. However, there has been a lot of speculation about the case, with many people believing that Paulette was killed by her own mother. Her behavior during the investigation and the secret conversation she had with her other daughter heightened this theory. Still, there are others who believe that the real killer could actually be Maruccio. Maruccio came from a very influential family in Mexico, and there were reports that he was even friends with the Attorney General, Alberto. This has led many to believe that authorities were trying to cover up for him by pinning everything on Lizette. Another theory is that Maruccio and Lizette were having financial problems and had probably killed Paulette to relieve themselves of her expensive medical care. The police received a lot of backlash over how they handled the case, to the point that Alberto Bazbaz resigned as attorney general on May 26 that year. Lizette and Maruccio would officially divorce in 2014, and Lizette would go on to give several interviews proclaiming her innocence and criticizing how the case was handled. At one time, she even attempted to sue the state of Mexico for moral damages, claiming the accusation about her murdering her daughter ruined her life. This case has been featured on Netflix in a Spanish show called Story of a Crime, The Search. What do you think happened to Paulette? Do you believe that her death was an accident? Let me know in the comment section and be sure to like and subscribe for more.